Now switching, going over to football. The NFL draft finished up yesterday, um, the three rounds. And as always, the Patriots made some very interesting picks, picks some things that surprised us. And Bill Belichick continues to confuse, excite, and just kind of piss off Patriots fans. Um, looking at the Patriots draft picks first, we'll do that before we expand out to the rest of the league. Um, right now, you're seeing their top seven picks up on the board. Obviously, they had more than that later rounds, Patriots. Stockpiling late picks, but as far as um, these picks go, at least uh, what I think that will go over to you guys, uh, Nate Solder, um, I think was a, a solid pick for them. I expected them to go with um, the guy the Eagles picked, whose name's escaped me right now. Seemed like more of a textbook Belichick pick, but plenty of tackles on the board. This is a guy who will step in, replace Matt Light. Light's contract's currently up. He's a guy that's had some trouble. I think they'll put Solder right, move Sebastian Vollmer over to left, and that seemed he's. We've seen him be very confident, especially against the Colts. Dwight Freeney, who's killed the Patriots in the past. He seems pretty good there. Roz I. Dowling, the great name, cornerback out of Virginia. Confused some people. Wasn't the best cornerback on the board when he was taking. He was the sixth best on the board, but I think the reason the Patriots picked him, he's 6'2". Other guys, 5'10", 5'11". I think they want to hide at that position, especially against the Jets and their tall receivers. I think that's a beating the Jets move. Shane Vereen, running back from California, is more of a fullback type guy, I think. If they want Ben Jarvis Green Ellis to be their main back this year, they're not going to want him to carry in the uh, red zone. They don't want him getting hurt. Shane Vereen will take those power cat carries. Stephon Ridley's a guy I didn't know much about. That pick surprised me. That's almost like on a video game. You're trying to pick. You press the wrong button. I don't know what they were thinking there. Ryan Mallett, I think, is a solid pick. It surprised a lot of people, but if you really look at it, Brady claims he wants to play 10 more years, but between his knee injury, his love life, and just the, the way he's been playing, he may only have four or five years left. I think Ryan Malik can come in. He has a lot to learn from Tom Brady. Most of his faults are things that can be fixed. He can come in and be the quarterback for this team after Tom Brady. And then Marcus Cannon's a guy I don't know much about. Uh, much about. Lee Smith, tight end from Marshall. Um, a guy like Algie Crumple, who's going to retire at the end of this year. Good hands, decent hands, mostly a blocker. Somebody a lot of people said could even play tackle. And I think that's a replacing Crumpler pick. Guys, what do you make of the Patriots draft? Well, I absolutely hate it. I don't understand a sick, I barely understand any of the picks that they made in this draft. In the first round of the draft, they take notes, they take Nate Solder, an offensive tackle, which I get they want to protect Tom Brady, and the offensive line was a concern. But if you look at them over the past few years, the reason they weren't a strong team was because they had absolutely no pass rush. Any team in the league with a legitimate quarterback could throw on them. Even ones with non-legitimate quarterbacks were able to throw on them and get yards downfield. I really think the one thing they needed in this draft was a pass rush, and they really did not get it. When they took Nate Solder, Cameron Jordan was still on the board, a player who had owned Nate Solder one-on-one -on -one in college, and people were saying how much better Cameron Jordan would be as a pick. Then in the second round, they take Razai Dowling, a cornerback. Doesn't make any sense to me. They already have enough of those. They have Devin McCourty. They have Lee Bodden, two solid cornerbacks. I don't understand why they didn't take someone like Daquan Bowers with that pick. They just really needed a pass rush, in my opinion, and they struggled to get any of it. I guess their approach is, we'll give quarterbacks as much time as they need, but the cornerbacks have to cover the wide receivers. But I don't know, because if a quarterback has so much time, the wide receiver can break free. And the last pick I want to talk about is Ryan Mallett, the QB out of Arkansas. I don't understand that at all either, because people say, oh, you need to get somebody into the system early so he can succeed Tom Brady. But I just don't understand this early. Brady's still on a long-term contract, doesn't show any signs of slowing down, one of the best players in the league, debatably the best player in the league last year, wants to play 10 more years, barring any setback and injury. I think it was too early to take a quarterback, and without a pass rush, I don't see the Patriots going any further than they did last year, which was the first round of the playoffs. I think... Um I, I don't like the draft, maybe not as strongly as you dislike the draft. I don't think that they definitely needed to get a pass rush, and they didn't. I think it, I wasn't surprised by the fact that they picked a quarterback. It seems to me every year they end up picking a quarterback, and I always think, why? But they, uh, they seem, uh, maybe not every year, but they consistently do pick up a quarterback and maybe trade him away for someone um, that they do need maybe late down the season. I think Razai Dowling, I didn't really understand that pick when it was first picked, but lo maybe looking more into Razai Dowling, as Alex has said, it is, it's not a bad pick. It wasn't the best pick, but it, was, it wasn't a bad pick. He was a tall cornerback uh, that could really pan out to be a really good cornerback uh, for the Patriots. Um, I don't know if two running, running backs uh, for the third and fourth pick was a great idea, but I, I, I learned that I always second-guess Bill Belichick, and then I learned that things usually pan out the way that he wanted them to. So I'm not going to – I'm going to wait until the, season starts, uh, until the season starts to scrutinize the draft picks. 
I have a mixed bag here. Nate Solder from Colorado. I prefer Costanzo, he was still on the board, or Cameron Jordan. Ross I. Dowling, it's not just that he was a tall cornerback, it was that he was a first round talent, but he consistently got injured in college. Shane Vereen I like. I think he could be a lot like Kevin Falk, except definitely not, I should say, more like a goal line back that could also run pretty well. He's underrated at that. Stephen Ridley, I don't get that pick. I think he was a reach too. Ryan Mallett, I mean, a lot of people say he could be Brady's successor of the future. I don't know. They might trade him because teams are going to want a quarterback in a couple of years, and if Mallett can learn under Brady, he's got all the tools to be a very good quarterback in the NFL. Marcus Cannon from TCU, I think he can be moved to guard, so he may replace Stephen Neal. Lee Smith, I think that was a reach, and I don't think we needed a tight end as much as people thought. And I think to address the pass rush so late in the sixth round from Central Arkansas, Markel White and Malcolm Williams from TCU, I don't think they're going to make much of an impact on this roster. Well, I want to address your point really quickly about how we don't really question Bill Belichick and it all seems to work out because he did make some great picks with Brandon Spikes and Devin McCourty last year. But you also have to look at the picks he passed up on. He didn't get Clay Matthews, traded that pick away to the Packers, and Clay Matthews ends up almost single-handedly winning the Super Bowl for the Packers, along with some great play from Aaron Rodgers. And it's really frustrating because the Patriots could have had him, they could have had the pass rush, and it didn't work out. They didn't try to trade up in the draft and get Nick Fairley, a player they could have used, and they passed on all the pass rushers. So I'm going to be one of those people who does question Bill Belichick and doubts him in the draft. All right, just an interesting stat. I was talking about quarterbacks. Since 2000, so Drew Bledsoe, uh, Drew Bledsoe, where the Patriots have picked six quarterbacks in the draft. That includes Tom Brady. Obviously, that panned out, but Drew Bledsoe was thought to be a franchise quarterback. And then with Tom Brady, assuming we be a franchise quarterback, five more Patriots obviously don't have a problem with that. And what you're saying about Clay Matthews, they got Rob Gronkowski instead. And um, that's a guy who obviously um, won us some games down the stretch next year. Run out of time. One thing I quickly want to say, Cam Newton will be a bust in – Carolina, I think any other system he'd play well, but asking a guy who threw 50 passes out of the pot in college to stand back behind that terrible offensive line and throw is going to lead to mental mistakes and interceptions. He's Jamarcus Russell waiting to happen. All right, we're going to take a break right now on the other side. Heat Celtics going on. We'll talk some of that. Talk some Bruins, Boston playoffs. Always fun, so make sure you're sticking around.